Today, I finally bring you the video a lot of you have been asking about, and that is waterproofing showers. There's a million different ways to waterproof a shower. Today, we're gonna be using Kemperol 022. A couple of things to keep in mind. If you can't, for whatever reason, finish waterproofing your shower in one day, you need to come back the next day and finish it. Number two, once you waterproof your shower, you only have about eight days. So don't waterproof it today and try to come back two months from now and try to get your tile on there. It's just not gonna work. More info in the description. And uh, anyway, let's get to work. It's called 022. Safety requirements are gonna be first. Anytime you mess with the materials, you wanna keep the contact away from the skin, long sleeves, appropriate chemical gloves, and safety glasses. Fresh air, ventilation, doesn't hurt, but this is an interior product. This will come in a component A and a component B. Inside this basin right here on the lower side is your first part that you're gonna be mixing. It's gonna be a one minute mix, thoroughly mixed. Add in your component B hardener. That's gonna be roughly about two minutes. We're roughly gonna have around 20 to 25 minutes of a pot life, okay? Fleece we're gonna be using is called a 500 fleece. That is this roll right here. You can almost see through it. The 022 that we're using is a very, very viscous material. It is very thick. This is the only acceptable fleece to use. That way we get full saturation with the full reinforcement all the way through. Six inches of requirement. All of your 90 degree turn areas for reinforcements will have a six inch piece. All corner inserts will have a circular little pie cut insert to protect these as well. Field sheets will be done last on the walls. They're gonna just run all the way down, cover everything up, and then we'll work our way back out doing the flooring lastly. Sand will be embedded to everything while it's still wet. That way we get a chemical and a mechanical adhesion for your thin set. All right, before we get started, let's take a minute to thank today's sponsor. Today's sponsor for this video is Ali Tools. Ali Tools is a browser extension that you can use when shopping on AliExpress. So I use Ali Tools every time I shop on AliExpress because it has some really cool features. For example, have you ever bought a tool simply because it was on sale and only to find out two weeks later that you actually didn't get it on sale at all. You just bought it at a regular price and they were just having some fake Black Friday sale or something like that. Well, don't let that happen to you again. Ali Tools has this really cool feature called Price History Graph where you can actually look at the price for that item for up to six months in the past to ensure that you're getting the best price possible. Another really cool feature that Ali Tools has is that it shows you similar products to the ones that you are looking at. This is going to ensure that you get the best possible tool for your needs. So you have the best tool at the best price. What else is there? Well, Ali Tools also assigns a seller level to every seller. This is going to ensure that you buy from the most reputable seller possible to ensure you don't have any problems and then you get your tool in a timely manner. All right, so now you have the best product at the best price from the best seller. I know what you're thinking. How much is this plugin gonna cost? Well, it's absolutely free. There's a link in the description below. Go check it out for yourself. So the first thing to start with is preparatory work. Every joint in here has been sealed up with either a Kempertex sealant, a two-part polyurethane sealant, something to bridge these gaps that's acceptable to work with the 022. 022 being an epoxy polyurethane hybrid mix, this is an acceptable sealant. The goal is to seal all the gaps and give me a good smooth transition. That way the field membrane can go over it with less chance of air pockets and materials being on the underside of it. Smoother transitions. All right, gentlemen, what we're gonna need to do is start off with the six inch roll. First piece has been cut. Down here, we're gonna work with our floor pieces and we're gonna leave these where they are at. Notice, I've got edge to edge. It's gonna be set down in the 90 degree with three inches coming up the wall, three inches coming down the wall. Does that make sense? All right, so where you can't see, that is getting set in place right here. You can't just pile all your cut pieces up because you have a time limit on your bucket. So you want your pieces somewhere relative to where you're going to work, that way there's not a lot of hunting. Everything will be completely done and ready to go the second we open a bucket. The bucket never gets open until all people installing say, I'm ready, all right? This avoids cost, all right? If you're not ready and that bucket just sits there, that is money curing in a bucket. Your goal is to apply that to the wall in a good timely manner before she thickens up on us, okay? 
This stuff will last, this stuff will work, and it is a great material as long as it's applied per the rules, which aren't too hard. We have a good cement board up here. We have the preparatory work already done. The only suggestion is where I've got a little bit of a concave shape to it. Next time, flush it up a little more. This does not stop us today by any means. We go straight over it. We just gotta make sure we get the air out from the underside. Make sure that fleece follows the contour of the shape of whatever we're covering. Take these and make your strips. We've decided for today's purpose, what we're gonna do, we're roughly gonna be around this area. So I need one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and hit this seam going down. And we might as well go ahead and hit this seam going across here too. Okay. So cut piece and for example, this piece, flop it over here. All right? Okay. Now, before we're allowed to start, there are a couple of meters. They sell these as a one single meter that will measure dew point, relative humidity, and surface temperature. You also need to know your air temperature. If y'all realize we have a, a heater over there warming this up, 40 degrees is the minimum requirement. We need four, uh, I'm sorry, 50. 50 degrees and going up is the minimums. That heater is to get it here because outside the air is not even gonna to get to but about 48 today. Whatever the dew point is, which right now in this room is 50, the surface temperature of this substrate temperature has to be five degrees above the dew point or more. Measuring the surface, right now I have 60.4. All right, so dew point 50, this right here is 60. We are good to install. Just so you understand the purpose of this. Y'all have seen a glass iced tea sitting outside in the summer and it sweats. That is not the tea going through the glass. That is the, the moisture in the air touching the glass and turning back into bulk water. That's what can happen to concrete, but it's so porous you can't see if it's got moisture. The rules of this material are, there are no water liquids of any sort that come near this until it's cured up and ready to go. This is an awesome beast once it's cured up. All right, okay. so we'll wipe your feet off. It's raining outside. We wanna make sure we don't track any moisture in here. We wanna make sure this isn't sweating. The temperature readouts are showing that we're in good shape. Uh, air temperature is above our 50. We're good to go. I'm gonna give this to you and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do a corner insert as well. Corner insert, if you can make a circle, make a circle and then cut it like a Pac-Man. Okay. You know what I mean? If you can't make a circle, then just fold it. You can do one qu quarter of a circle, right? Now I've got a corner insert. I like that. Now the weakest point on anything tends to be at your corners. These inserts right here are what's gonna be your reinforcement to protect those from getting water. One way you take care of corners is by redundancy. So you've got a piece here, you've got your field sheet that's gonna overlap it. You have all that overlapping redundance. It seals those corners up very well. So one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven. Seven circles and then the strips that we just talked about. All right. The sole purpose of that piece that I just put in there uh -huh. is in case we accidentally drop anything inside. All right, so this is the roll of the 500 fleece. All I've done was cut a square piece off of it. Now, all drains, there are many, many different kinds, okay? This one in particular, the only weak point it has for water entry is around this edge. So this is my main concentration. Normally, they all go to the inside and the weak points are around here and you have to do finger attachments. This one's gonna be a little bit more simplified. So I wanna go past there. I'm gonna do it with a target patch over here and I'm gonna go put a new piece and I'm gonna cut a field sheet pretty close to it. So what I'm looking, if that's my weak point, I want as far over as I can without interfering with threads and stuff. So I'm gonna try to come to right here. Notice how the lines kind of line themselves up right there. Now it's nothing more than tracing. Okay. Now notice all the wrinkles I'm gonna get in there. I need some relief cuts. Okay. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes, 
take out the wrinkles. <laughs> yes, something to take out the wrinkles. Exactly. I tend to dog ear these. I like the way the circle and the curves fit better than the straight defined lines. Yeah, for example, yeah, if you get up on and you've got a huge drain, right. the bigger the diameter, the less chance of having wrinkles in it. The smaller it is, the smaller these fingers need to be. Them. Yes. There are many ways to do it. This is one of a whole bunch. Main deal, you want it doubled over on that weak point right there. So the next piece I put over for the field sheet is gonna cut nice and close and seal all these corners as well. So the main thing is to look. Do we think that we can get that to lay down nice and flat now? So you get a slight bit of overlapping right. where the fleece has to move around for itself naturally, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. When we do that field piece, we'll cut it close and then put some relief cuts there, make sure they flap over and seal all the weak areas that we've got. Okay. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Think we can install that? Mm-hmm. You got this? Yeah. Okay. Now, Anytime we're doing work, you always have a pair of scissors sitting somewhere close to the vicinity for you to grab them. As you move, the fleece may have a chance of trying to stretch as you work and all that air bubbles out. If you end up with a lot of slop and you've made good custom fits, use the scissors for trimming. All right, guys, you're gonna be tempted to use this for a bucket, but if the, this has been moved around a lot, it's gonna have crap all on the underside and it's only gonna be part A. So you don't wanna use it for a bucket and set it down on stuff. It's not a mixed component, all right? so. Don't make that mistake. Set this over there if you would, please, sir. When you mix, you mix on low RPM, that way you're not infusing a lot of air. You see how thick this stuff is? It's a very viscous material, which is why we're using this fleece. So, head away from it, feet go to the side. Again, the material costs some money. Protect your money, lock it down, that way you don't have an accidental pour over. Roughly about a minute for a pre-mix on the part A. Make sure to pay attention, get it all the way up against the edges, completely thoroughly mixed. It's gonna be even more important when we add in the part B, the hardener that goes in here, okay? Again, completely thoroughly mix it, get it all the way down to the edges, run this across the bottom. This is another reason you do not use a mud mixer. It'll tear that bucket up and you'll end up with little metal shavings from the buckets. Spiral mixers are the ones I suggest. Now, if you have two guys working inside of one area, remember, part A, part B, when they get mixed together, they create heat. Inside this container is all that material with all that heat, correct? Mm -hmm. So if you have two guys, I would suggest grabbing another container and pouring off into it. Does that make sense? One of you get half the material, one of you get the other half of the material. Corner inserts, I prefer those first. They stay hidden out of the way. Material is on the ground. What I'm doing right now is trying to get it all flattened out, getting all that material to soak in from the bottom side. Now you see this drips? Yeah. That's gonna harden however it stays and lays. Okay. So I normally try to take those drips and flatten them out a little bit. Just get it flat, no air pockets on the back side, fully saturated, and that should take care of it. So I will start at the top. Roughly how far up did you go? About two inches. Past the mark? Yeah. Okay. So I want liquid on the ground. What I'm about to put this into, you see all the cement board, all those holes? Yes. I need those sealed. So I gotta have enough to lay this fleece into it to where it soaks up and gets all that cement board. Your coverage rates are on a smooth substrate, pretty much. So when you have something really porous or concrete, you have to understand you're gonna go through a little bit extra material to get all that. Do you see all that? Yeah. That's what we're wanting to get filled in. Grab that excess that you dripped down there, bring that back up the wall, reuse it. Try to get roughly three inches on each side since this is a six inch piece. If we go down however far down we went. It's gonna be kind of like hanging wallpaper. Notice how that grabs it pretty well. Okay. So now I want all that liquid to soak in from the bottom into it. So I'm gonna grab this, 
I'll use a little bit of pressure and try to get it all to saturate into it. Finding one direction for rolling, not back and forth. So if I come up here, one direction to push all the air pockets out. That's an example why the sealant bead, if you have it going straight perfectly across, you don't end up with that little gapping right, right. there. You get a better seal. Now all that excess that I've got out there, I'm trying to grab that material and bring it back into it as well. All right, see white spots mm -hmm. like this? That shows you that you're undersaturated. You gotta make sure you have a little bit of a shine to it. That way you know you've got enough on the top side. No dry fleece. All right, so does it look like we have it nice and flat? Nice, flat up against her like we need to? If so, now we need to make sure it's saturated. I'm gonna grab that excess and bring it all the way down. I'm gonna drag that back into the tape itself. Mostly concentrating on not shoving air inside of it. Now, once you guys get a rhythm down and you've done this a handful of times, this is gonna go much faster than the way I'm showing you. Look like it's enough to soak up in there? Yeah. Okay. Again, for me, the easiest way is just fold it in half. Don't pull the fleece too tight, it will stretch. If you don't want it to stretch, then Loosely set it in there. I like that. Okay. All right, way to use this brush you'd like. Now I don't want to shove a lot of air in there, so I'm gonna just try to be kind of careful. Now the goal to know if you've got it kind of down there and nice and smashed pretty well, you'll see the piece that's on top of one you'll see it kind of telegraph through. You see how you see that line? Mm -hmm. That's that corner insert showing up through there. That's a good thing. If I can see it, that means that top piece is probably mashed down like it should be. Now, remember what we talked about having scissors near you? Mm -hmm. In case you've moved the fleece and it's stretched on you, now you have something you can trim it off with. If, you have, if I have little wrinkles and stuff, I'm gonna try to flatten the bad boys out just like this. I'm gonna get you to grab the scissors behind me that should be up here. They are right here. Okay, grab them. <laughs> they should have been. Trim off that excess. You will get crap on the scissors. It's quite all right. Just clean them off as soon as you're done. Now y'all can tell with the talking and everything, this is gonna slow it down. Normally you get 30 square feet and you should have a lot more done, but right, we are right. not in a hurry today. Today is make sure you guys are comfortable using this. So we can do this piece to save cutting. We could do it one of two ways. It could be go to edge, go to here and then go past, which that's three inches, right? It's three and three, six total. Another two inches to get the minimum requirement. So that could be five inches plus this. I don't have that in that sheet. So what we can do, normally if I did that, I would go here and across, and then this piece I could butt it up to the corner. Nice, pretty, and tight. All we're gonna do is flip it and do the opposite. We're gonna take this piece, butt it up to the corner which means when I install this one, I want past my lip. Right, down, five inches over. All overlaps are two inches here, past reinforcement by two more inches. Okay. That way the reinforcement's in there and I get this to go across and re-adhere to new substrate by two inches for grabbing. Okay. Gives me a lot of strength that way. I would prefer to do the first piece from edge here and then past the five inches. Mm -hmm. I don't have it in the length. Okay, got it. So I don't want to cut up extra pieces on you. So I think the best way we can make the most of the material, this one will be a straight run. And so this field sheet will go here and then we'll get it past that like we needed to, five inch. Perfect. That makes sense? Perfect. Okay. What I'm doing is working all the resin into the fleece. I don't want any dry wet spots. Do me a favor, take that roller and zip it around there real quick with liquid, with liquid. Faster than that. <laughs> Fast, Leroy. Leroy that's More? Yes, sir. And on top of here where I want to stick to. Look, see what I'm saying? Put it on there, but put it on there quick. You see if we can get that fully saturated before it goes bad, you know what I mean? All right, work on flattening that out. 
No, no, with, with the fingers. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> no, try to move this out of the oh. way. It's like it's caught down. <laughs> <laughs> no, with the brush. It's a lot of real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Tight fit, huh? Very. I'm gonna get all this stuff all over me. You hear the popping? Mm -hmm. That's air from the underneath it. All right, so get this all down nice and flat. You gotta work aside, dude. Work what? Work the side. Get it all down nice and flat. Notice I keep pushing right there to make yeah. sure that's the main area. I want to make sure that that's nice and snug down there. And then we'll do a target patch that'll set up over here. Or the whole thing. We're gonna install one sheet right here, which is gonna come out roughly here to go to the corner and pass the reinforcement by two inches. This reinforcement piece is six inches, three inch here, three inch here. So I'm gonna bring two more inches onto this side of it. So I need five plus whatever this length is. So we're gonna do 85 inches down. That'll go from around here all the way to the ground Pass the reinforcement by two inches onto the horizontal. And that's gonna come this way and this way, okay? That sheet will get installed. And then normally you would continue on, go everywhere else if all this other stuff was done. So, let's say this wall is done. Now we're gonna tie this new wall into it. This already has the reinforcement embedded behind a field sheet. This sheet is only gonna go to the corner. Close to it, it can have a little bit of a gap. Not exactly perfectly at all but it will cover up here. Here, all the way to the edge, we're gonna run that down again on the horizontal, past the reinforcement piece by another two inches. So X height down, five inches on the horizontal. In theory, everything gets done here, 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 completed. Horizontal bottom will be done very last. We'll step out, out to here, Wet everything back down again, a nice, real fast, quick wet coat, and then start feeding in the sand. Take that thing as quick as you can, put the bucket directly below, saturate it, and while it's dripping wet, grab it and don't, when I say fling yeah, it, know, use it generously, fling that bad boy up there, get a coating on here, set it in there, get that in there, fling that up there and go however far out that's gonna go. Okay. Okay, it's like somewhere around here-ish. Coat it, dip it, coat it, dip it, work way down and immediately get it up in there. Your piece is gonna come down and hang out past that, remember? Right. Which means this area will have one cut. Right. And that's it. Just remember to have the scissors next to you. Pre-cut that. You can pre-cut it. You can measure out, that's five inches. That's five. You could do a five inch or you could just start from your top, bring it down, and he'll have the scissors over here. He'll be ready. And then he'll hand you the scissors, make your cut, give the scissors back, he'll clean them up, and just move forward. Once that's all there and you got, you'll take it, you'll flatten it all the way up, make sure that bottom soaks into it. Okay, all the way down. Then, when it's all flattened, dip it, soak that bad boy down. And then, same thing. Then fling this wall, get it all over the place. That's it. You're gonna get kinda close. Right. Not all the way up against it, but you know, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch, something like that. Bring it this way. The excess that goes back on this side, when you're done, just let it flop out and hang there. Okay. Make sure to get liquid all the way to the edge. Okay. Get your fleece down, then put more liquid all the way to the edge. When it's finished, you can take your scissors and trim it back out. Okay. Not a knife. Okay. Stay away from knives. No knives, no hook blades. They tend to fray that up. It gives you bad, bad edges. Fully saturate the roller, and there you go. All right, you've got plenty coming out this way. Go past that caulking joint. Okay. PG? All right. <laughs> PG? <laughs> All right. Can I bring it that way? <laughs> yes, you can. So you just uh, go through a couple of these buckets, huh? Yeah, only 30 square feet for each one. And that doesn't count for overlaps. So all that, take that, flatten it. That way she doesn't puddle up and harden. Corner in first. And then bring the rest out. 
Okay, then mark it flat and get all your wrinkles out. Now, if you look on the back side of it, Leo, see how everything's starting to turn gray? Yeah. No, don't slow down, don't slow down. Everything's starting to turn gray. That means you've got your liquid up underneath there. All right, so you're gonna start moving stuff around as you add more pressure. I just, not a lot, but I hold it kind of in place. All I'm doing is flattening those wrinkles out, making sure that bottom soaks up into it nicely, quickly. See how she starts pulling straighter? Now work on your 90 bottom. Once you have those wrinkles out, and I do believe you have good saturation, you'll, you've got a little more mashing, but not a lot. Start, go ahead and wet that roller down, get it nice and wet, and start saturating at the same time you're straightening it up. Just enough pressure where the fleece doesn't slide around on you. Now, whatever direction you take, you can, Leo, just make sure you go from what you're doing and pushing to the outside in case you've got air that you're shoving out. In other words, you get kudos, you're doing it the right way. You see those really dark, shiny spots right there? It's a thick, heavy material. So when you're working it, just make sure you're working all that excess liquid everywhere. A completed area will look like that corner over there. See how it's shiny? There's no dull spots, and most importantly, there's no white spots bleeding through it. Full saturation. Now, see the caulking joint that goes across there. You see how his fleece, it has that same shape? That means he's got it stuck up against yeah. there that he's looking for. So you want to see the shape of whatever that substrate is that tells you you have better adhesion. You start seeing round spots and bubbles and stuff. You've got to get the air burped out of it. All right, don't forget, double check the ground where you're working. Make sure there's no heavy puddling from everything slipping down. Okay. If it is, just bring that excess liquid up so it gets put to use. And more importantly, so it doesn't harden on the ground like that. Eric, once the guys get in a good steady roll, they'll start trying to work off of each other. They never let the bucket go completely empty. More importantly, they try not to let the nap rollers slow down. If they stop moving, they start the hardening process and you'll go through more naps, okay? So if he can keep him moving, the second he runs out, the goal is to have him a fresh bucket and for him to have all of his fleece pre-cut and ready to go. That way it keeps moving. All right, one thing that we didn't discuss, hazardous waste. As an A part and as a B part, they cannot be thrown in traditional dumpsters. It has to be handled as hazardous waste. However, when you fully have a mixed container, A and B mixed, and it cures, once it cures, it can be thrown into standard waste. Okay. So it's not an issue at that point. Now what happens if you use, use this without the, the fleece? Without the fleece, it's unreinforced. There's no waterproofing. You gotta have the fleece. When it soaks up into that fleece, it binds everything together and it's a solid entity. It's got a, it's elongation strength and everything goes with it. As just a liquid, you'll have guys that will forget to do corner inserts and will catch them all the time. We'll just shove a bunch of liquid in there. No, it, it's, it's not waterproofing at that point. It's got to be embedded in the fleece. So if there's a missed piece, that's why those circle pieces are so, so important. So the fleece itself is what, it's like concrete. It's, it's like, the like the rebar. It binds it, it together. Binds it together. Without it, there's no separate. tensile, there's no It'll elongation, separate. there's nothing. It's nothing but a crumbly rock. It'll that's separate. a very good analogy. It'll separate and then water can go. Correct. Now remember later, when he's got all this saturated and he's done moving the fleece this way with any stretching it's got, trim it then trim it. It's not a lot of pressure. All I want is to make sure it's sticking into that resin. Nice and straight, less chance of wrinkles, and you'll work it all in with your roller. Flatten her out real quick. Just some good fast passes. Okay. Now, if you ever notice you put a dryer roller like that and it pulls anything, go ahead and soak it up. But your main goal is to saturate the bottom, and flatten it out. Nice fast passes on it to make sure you've got it placed where you need it to. Make sure those edges are stuck. All right, Manny, do you see how you don't see liquid above this? Yeah. If he's hauling butt, you need to make him help him see that he needs to do this. Okay. All right, do me a favor. He's gonna paint one time right that way, right across it. On, on, on the fleece, on the fleece. Oh, on the fleece. Uh, one more, see how it's all white right yeah. back there? Now you're only going up that high, so drop that roller down. There you go. Now I'm pretty sure he's gonna have adhesion on that top side. 
So when he comes down, how many inches should he go over this piece? It's two, All right? That's right. Look more confident. Yeah. Two uh, inches two. minimum. Okay. So if this bad boy ever creeps and it goes to one and three quarter, what's the minimum again? Two. Don't let it creep. Two inches is your minimum. Okay. A lot of the guys in the field, they'll make adjustments. You can go two and a half, three, whatever. Just keep it at two. At least two. At least two. You've got really good saturation. I can see a lot of that gray popping through. Do I put more? Yeah, go ahead and put more. Do I have to go all the way up? Here? Ah, no, man, no, man. Okay. Just make sure wherever you stop, you start there again. That way, you, if you're, you're working an air bubble out, you work it all the way okay. out. Right. Take the scissors, try to get a clean straight cut. I know it's gonna be tough at this angle. It, I know it will. Try to get it straight. Make sure that's fully saturated. Do you see any areas that look like it could have a little bit more of a shine to it? Move your head a couple angles. You see that little bitty wrinkle right there at the edge. Run your roller that way. Flatten it right out. Don't push real hard where it pulls it away from your corner. Dead on. And then check around. See down there? Yeah. And borrow that from you. All right. Let's say the whole tub is done. Okay? Uh -huh. I don't want it dripping too much. I'm not putting any pressure, I'm just getting it wet. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> I ain't gotta look at you anymore. <laughs> See, I'm not trying to add a whole bunch, but I am trying to make sure I've got some stuff in there for some sand to stick to. Okay. That's what I'm looking for right now. So it has been installed, no dry fleece anywhere, right? Right. Now, just enough of a good layer taking that excess material and giving me a little bit more to stick to. Careful where you got your reinforcements, not to mess them all up. Same thing on this wall, as fast as you can, get it up, get it done, and then flatten that bottom and we start feeding sand. And with the drips, you can see why you wanna do the bottom last. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll flatten it out, make it nice and pretty, and there you go. Brother, you really might wanna hurry up before you get your a new hairdo. <laughs> Only that wall wasn't right there in the way. You get some great shots. <laughs> I don't know, that wall's really helping a lot, believe it or not. Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? You got on, you know, you got on the ladder just so you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. <laughs> you can pull it up a little bit and... <laughs> <laughs> He's actually right. If you do have to pull it out a little bit to get the blade in there. So the practice is to try to do it aesthetically correct. Clean lines, clean everything is the best practice to do this. You don't want the mortar guy slinging stuff around and have fabric not all the way adhered and sticking out, getting in the way. All that. Now, if he left some hanging over, once it dry, could we? Cut it back like, yeah. yeah. All right, and the, the difference. If you go to start cutting this and you've got all your sand thrown into it, it's gonna be like cutting sandpaper. You're gonna tear up whatever tools you have up against it. Start right here and give it a good run all the way up. Not a lot of pressure, just enough to, a little firm. Stick it back to the wall. Let's say this is a full completed area. You'll do your walls first. Chicken feeding it, I don't care how you do it, but the thing is, it all gets embedded. Do it like that, fling it. Good chicken feeder. Now remember, the main purpose of this is so you get mechanic. No, no, keep going. It's so you get mechanical adhesion to the thin set. Okay. The more sand embedded it, the better. It's roughly, if you were to measure it out, it's about 30 pounds per 100 square feet. Do me a favor, stick some back over on that side. Not a whole lot. All right, so food for thought. Wait, keep going. Uh, if you're getting a lot of sagging, you can use less material for the kiss coat, okay? You understand what I'm saying? You can back off on it a little bit, on the, that excess. Main thing is when you finish, you want to make sure that as soon as you're done with everything, you get some sand embedded into it. That way, while the 022 is curing and hardening up, 
it bites that new sand. So if you think, all right, it's been a couple of days, we forgot to sand some areas, go by and paint it. The problem is part of it's already hardened up and cured. Then you're putting a new layer over the top of that. You want it to be in the full curing process. Does that make sense? Okay. I think you're good, brother. All right, so when you're done, shop vac, taking the, uh, the filter out of it and vacuum up all your sand. Don't let anybody in here and get trash and all that. When it sets up, this can be vacuumed and reused as long as it's still clean, okay? As long as it's still clean and there's no moisture in it, reuse it. I do that all the time. That's another reason you never really have to do the floor because by the time you're done with the walls, it's there anyway. Like this here. And right in here. The sagging? Yeah. yeah. Whenever your thin set comes in, he's going to put his bed across it. Uh -huh. There are minute things that he can float in with that, okay? Small little ones, it can. Now on the bottom, let's picture that you forgot to do something like all those big puddles right. that drip down everywhere. That's going to be a little bit tougher to hide. So if he's going to hide it, if you're hiding big globs of stuff, you got to raise up the height, right? You don't want to mess up with your drain heights. So be careful on the excess materials. So you saw the sagging on here. Right. When the sand was embedded into it, I had to show you a couple of things. That way these will come up later and you'll know what to do. Right. The purpose, it's a lot of heavy material on a lot of liquid on top of the fleece. So when it gets that weight of the sand, it starts pulling right. itself down and it's sagging. That's telling you, all right, so when I do the rest of it, I can go a lighter coat, a little bit lighter. That way it's not so much liquid that allows the sagging process. Okay? Again, this window. Yes, sir. On the inside up there, well, how are we gonna stop that? Up to the window, the white part? That's gonna be a decision y'all guys make. What can you waterproof? For example, could you waterproof the whole room? Yeah, you had to make a call. I wanna do stained concrete here. So where's your stopping point? If the vinyl on your windows is your stopping point, you're tiling all the way into it, take care of your corners, seal them up, protect your window, and then waterproof up to where you need to, if that's your call. If y'all are gonna do something else besides tile there and you don't want waterproofing, don't put waterproofing. Good question. I need to hear some tie-in questions. How far up are you boys going to go? Do y'all know? Is it all the way to the ceiling? That's what I was about to ask you. Okay. Hefe. Yeah. Huh. So all right. Hefe says you're going all the way to the ceiling. So let's say you bring in some materials. You're ready to go. You will protect your ceiling. You don't want to get polyurethane and epoxy all over it. So do your tape job, protect it, bring it down. How far over this should I go? Any guesses? Two inches. Two inches. <laughs> Minimum two inches. I'm going to say that a hundred freaking times. Whatever is in here, make sure your overlaps are right to where you truly get a waterproof. You have to picture this. Let's say I wanted to seal this whole thing off and fill it with water. Can you picture in your head what you just did? Would it hold all the water out? Is there a weak point in that corner or did you put your insert in there? Is there a weak point anywhere? If the answer is no, you've done your job. Good. That can be done in however many pieces you need, as long as the overlap is minimum. Corner inserts, present wrapping. Stick the thing in if you needed to, where it goes in like this and flops out. You can make a cut and then, or dog ear it if it's not gonna get in the way of the tile. You know what I mean by dog ear? Big tail, they've got many different words. That's one way, just get your overlaps right. There are details online. Jason has access to those and he can show you right where they're at. Everything you run across, there will be a drawing for that, for what you guys are doing. I would like y'all to still step outside and I'm gonna do a dry run without liquid and I'm gonna show you how to do one of these pipe penetrations. Okay. It's a two piece thing. It's, you're going to have pipe penetrations, nubs sticking out, okay? okay. If y'all are good with this, paper has to, all the, the, all the paper has to go, absolutely. Uh, there won't be much adhesive. It normally peels off. You'll have that shiny piece like that was down here. A right. couple of little slivers. Get the slivers off. Okay. Clean it off really well. Strike all your sealant beads this time. Try to make them nice and flat. That way you have an easier time working the air pockets out. Scissor is your choice of tool. Take that. Pop the, the nap roller back off your frame. Get that cleaned up really well. Clean up your mixer and everything really good. I'm going to step out here and I'm going to do a couple of pre-cuts. It's very simple, but get yourselves cleaned up and I'm going to do a fleece for you real quick. Okay? Please be careful of that. Just so you know, when you do, check it out. You know how we're coming down and across five inches? Right. Right? That's to make your flooring a little bit easier. That means my, I've got my reinforcements in my corners. That flooring can go straight to the edge. 
Okay. So you can pre-think about it. Take your tape measure and measure edge to edge to edge to edge, and then cut that circle out to where it can go over your drain. Okay. You can pre-cut it where it's not a big roll piece. Right. Do it that way. So with us coming down and across, that's gonna make that bottom piece a lot easier than trying to lap it back up. Okay. I thought you'd have an easier time with that. All good? All good. Eric, sir, do you have anything for me that you'd like to ask? So let's say we end up with a dry sag somewhere like a really, Like that right there? A really bad dry sag. Can we take a sander and yes. knock that down? Absolutely. If you don't want to float your thin set and everything around it and take a chance on eye side, absolutely. It's only the liquid that's on the top, I'm not concerned. Don't touch the fleece. Right. That's the main thing. Do your repairs at one time, and then if you have some that like, it's a big sag, put some liquid on there and then get some more sand for adhesion. But small ones like that, little bitty spots. Yeah, if you'd like a little bit better, flat disc on a 120 grit, probably take it off pretty quick. Good question, do you have any others? All right, boys, I'm gonna get out of your way. Y'all, you two guys, get your stuff all cleaned up, get your tools cleaned up, and I'm gonna do some fleece for you. On this one, I'm not worried about the way this falls inside the stud with movement. Okay. In other words, I'm asking you don't add in another six inch piece. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Wrap the box. If you can do it in one piece with protecting the corners, okay. If that's too much a pain in the ass, do it in two pieces. If that really sucks, do this one, do this one, and do this one. As long as you got your overlaps right, you can do that. And it also is irrelevant if you wanna run it this way or this way. Boys, this stuff is so chemical friendly where it binds itself together. You could do zigzags on the whole thing if you really wanted to and you got a wild hair up your butt. Guys do that with our traffic coating on the same scenarios. So find out the easiest way to apply it as long as your overlaps are right and everything can keep water out, that's it. Yes, sir. It's called a hula skirt. All right. Pipe penetration. Pipe penetration coming out. Hula skirt's going to have fingers. The larger the penetration, the larger the fingers can be. The smaller the piping, like y'all are going to do for hot and cold water nubs, stuff like that, it'll be smaller fingers, maybe like three or four. Y'all are going to do some that are only going to wrap something that much. Give me a good overlap, remember? So if that's a penetration, that's what that front side's gonna look like. It's gonna wrap all the way around and overlap itself, okay? Target piece. All right, there are a couple of ways to do this. Hula skirt goes on first. All the fingers fully adhered all the way down, okay? You'll have a target patch that's gonna be cut for whatever the diameter is. Set it down, draw your circle, cut your circle. Nice and snug. That's gonna come down over it. My fingers are only about right here, right? How far past does that need to be? Two inches minimum. Thank y'all very much. Now, if you can get this target patch to work up, which fleece stretches. You'll get a better seal if you can bring it up like this. See how it kind of crawls up the pipe, whatever it may be? You'll get a much better seal. If you can't wiggle that down there because it's really tough, cut it. And wrap it like this. So you can grab it, put all your liquid down just like you've been doing and really wrap it up there nice and high. Enough to where you can still flatten this out. That'll bring the waterproofing up higher. And where you had to do the cut splice to get that collar to fit around it. Give me a four inch piece. Two inches on both sides of that cut piece now. All right, that'll give you a snugger fit. You can wrap it nice and tight. All right, do you have any questions on that? Yes, there are videos showing this exact assembly right here, but I couldn't leave without physically showing you guys. Basically, here's what it is. Fingers are bigger for the larger diameter. Y'all are gonna be dealing with small, so 
all those little bad boys are probably gonna be even smaller than these. Thank you guys for joining us today. Give us a like if you learned something today and we'll see you next time. We are Texas Barnumania.